It's Melissa and Shelly, and we're back for another episode of Light Rays. And today we're going to talk about color temperature and specifically the two color temperatures that are the most popular in residential design in the U.S. And that is 2700 Kelvin and 3000 Kelvin. And there's kind of a war between the Kelvins. And we're going to explain what, what do we even mean by Kelvins? What does that mean? And um, how does it relate to lighting? So first off, I want to ask Shelly, you, um, everyone has a preference uh, when, you know, when they're looking at lighting, even if they don't know what color temperature they are looking at, they definitely have a preference. 2700 Kelvin is warmer, 3000 Kelvin is more like a halogen light. Do you have a favorite? That's a good question. I love the way I feel and look under 2700, just like relaxed but I see the need for 3000 K if I need a little energy, but 2,700 feels luxurious to me. Right, right. And I think 2,700 is what we're used to because the Edison, the original Edison bulb uh, is kind of this warmer candle lighty 2,700 Kelvin feeling. And that's kind of what we're used to in the US. Um, and, and so, but before I get started on that, what, what the preferences are, my preference also, I also like 2700, but if I need to read as I get older and I need to see things more clearly, more contrast, I prefer 3000. Um, so yeah, I guess it's, it depends on the, the place. Uh, sometimes for some of us, it's location-based or task-based, and some of us, it's just we just like have a preference for something and we always go in that direction. So I want to explain where Kelvin comes from because it's a scientific term and it's used for temperature scale and zero in, in thermodynamics, zero reflects the complete absence of thermal energy. What does that even mean? So what it means in lighting is there's a range of color temperatures starting from a very low color temperature, which is warmer. That's like candlelight and the original tungsten bulb. That's the original Edison bulb that we're used to. That's like a thousand to 2000 Kelvin. Um, 2,500 to 3,500 is kind of um, candlelight to like moderate white light, like a halogen light. And 3,500 is getting even a little bit cooler. There's a little bit more blue in 3,500. So that's maybe, kitchen more task oriented. 3000 to 4000 Kelvin is like sunrise and sunset and clear sky. 4000, 5000 is fluorescent lamps, which we all know what that's like to sit under fluorescence. And I think you're doing that just now, right now. Um, and also the sun is measured usually at 5400 Kelvin. So uh, five to 5500 is electric electronic flash and daylight with a clear sky is 5,000 to 5,000 to 6,000, 5,000 to 6,500. 6,500 to 8,000 is an overcast sky. So, you know, there's more, there's less yellow or yet less yellow in the sky when it's overcast, more gray. 9,000 to 10,000 is shade or very overcast. So, that's kind of, we're gonna post that below uh, after our show, we're gonna post, this is from the University of College of London, that's their scale to kind of measure uh, Kelvin temp in light. So it gives you kind of an idea. So the lower the, the Kelvin temperature, the warmer the light. Um, low, and, and what's interesting is um, in that, is the most popular, I, we talked about the most popular colors in the US are kind of right in the middle, 2700 and 3000. And like I said, 2700 is the Edison bulb, 3000 is more like halogen. And um, it, I think it's, I think that you have to, in specific instances, um, 3000 is better than 2700, like white, the white kitchens and the white bath, the black and white kitchens, or the all white kitchens and the black and white bathrooms or the white bathrooms. The warmer the color temperature, the more it looks like yellow, and that's not so great in a kitchen or in a bathroom. So designers tend to, I, I don't know if you experience this, but designers tend to kind of, when they're doing a white kitchen, they're in the 3000 to 3500, maybe even 4000 range. Is, is that your experience? 
Yes, definitely. Well, it's also doesn't meet the colors, but it's also tasked, like you said. Right, yeah. right. And it doesn't meet the colors. Yeah. So 2700 in a white kitchen or white bathroom is going to give you a little bit of di the dingy kind of color and uh, make it feel like it's not clean. So I think what the whiter, the higher the color temperature, the whiter it is, the cleaner it looks. And it's definitely more in keeping with modern lighting or contemporary lighting, the higher color temperatures, which are like the 3000 to 4000 Kelvin. Those are often in linear LED systems, tape light, um, uh, recess lighting is generally or in the US in residential use, 3000 is kind of the standard. But I am noticing that designers for recessed in uh, residential applications are going more towards 2700, which is that warmer light. And so you and I have talked about why, and we kind of want to share maybe some of the reasons why this might be happening. Um, and usually, Warmer color temperatures make you feel cozier. Cooler co color temperatures make you more alert. Warmer color temperatures, because they make you feel warmer and cozier, are often used in cooler climates to make you feel warmer. Mm -hmm. You and I have talked about this, the Mason-Dixon line, and below the Mason-Dixon line where it's really warm, often you'll use a cooler color temperature to make things, make the, the space feel cooler. And in air like in Alaska or somewhere where you're way up north, maybe you're you feel better all the time with 2700 because it makes the space feel warmer. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a trick uh, to to make you feel like you're in a color temperature or you're in a uh, a, a space that feels the way you want it to feel. Um, but these days I'm noticing designers are asking even in recess lighting more, well, even though we're doing this modern thing that's happening where it's contemporary, I'm getting a lot more requests for 2,700 Kelvin for kitchens and bathrooms. And are you seeing that too? Yeah, I'm seeing that, I'm seeing it for kitchens and bathrooms and then multi-housing. They're switching from 3,000 to 2,700 too. Okay, that's so interesting. And I, I have a theory about this and my theory might um, be right, it might be wrong, but um, traditionally, historically, in times where things become chaotic and crazy, which arguably we've been in for the last two plus years, um, what happens is people want to feel safe and cozy and they wanna to retreat to a space where they feel um, safe. And if you're under blaring lights that are kind of the blue lights, you don't definitely, that doesn't, um, that doesn't evoke a feeling of, I feel safe and comfortable. That's like, I'm getting, uh, someone's interrogating me, you know, the cooler, the color temperature, the more alert you are. Um, so I, I think that maybe now, even though we're kind of coming out of COVID, uh, and people are still working on their homes. I think they realize that, that they, uh, they want a little bit of a warmer color temperature and they wanna go back to more classic uh, design and safer designs. Um, and safer and more classic designs have traditionally for us in the US have that warmer tungsten 2700 Kelvin bulb. And that might be why we've exhausted the white kitchen and the white bathroom maybe a little bit, and we are retreating back to something that feels safe and safe is cozy at night in front of the fire. And the fire is a very low Kelvin temperature, 1800, 1700 is, is candle. And I, I, I feel like we maybe want to retreat back there now, even though COVID is sort of kind of maybe over everybody feels exhausted and needs to um, rehabilitate and, and, and um, revitalize and maybe they need warmer color temperature. Uh, does that make sense? I don't I know. I think it makes total sense on that. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that we are so compu computer-based these days. And if you're in a office or a data center or whatever, you're under cool light. Their studies constantly 
So when you get home, it's harder to relax because our melatonin's eaten a little bit. So when you come home and it's a little bit more relaxing feeling psychologically, you'll relax a little bit better and be able to sleep a little easier. That totally makes sense. The computer screen and being sitting in front of the computer all day, because they do say when it's time to go to bed, get your lights warmer. You don't want those bright, cool blue spectrum lights. You want something with more red or yellow spectrum to help you fall asleep because you can't fall asleep. We all know how hard it is to fall asleep when you're watching a movie or you're reading a book on your, on your laptop or on your, um, your, you know, your iPad or whatever, your phone. <laughs> um, we look at them all the time. So that, that makes sense. And I think it's kind of specific to the US. Um, I know in other parts of the world, they're not very comfortable with a 2700 color temp, even at night. They operate in generally in cooler color temperatures. Um, in, I lived in Japan for two years. And when I was there, I definitely noticed um, the color temperature was much, was higher. Uh, even when they did, they used a lot of fluorescence in markets and, and, and it, even outside. But um, when even, it, even a regular lighting for them, it was always a little bit cooler. Um, temperature and it creates alertness and all kinds of other things, but also you don't get that coat. You, I never was able to find anything that gave me the cozy feeling. There were no light bulbs that really that did that. I think the coolest, I mean, the warmest, excuse me, light bulb in Japan is probably 3000, which is the same as a halogen light. Uh, if everybody remembers their halogen, um, they did, you know, rail lighting, the curved rail lighting or whatever, and, and recess lighting had a halogen bulb and that was 3000 Kelvin. So um, e the, the, cool, the warmest was still like kind of neutral. Um, but I do think in times like this where it's uncertain, the economy's changing, um, everybody's scaling back a little bit, not spending as much, everybody's a little worried. We do tend to retreat back to maybe our ancestral fire. I don't know, you know, like you're sitting around the fire and talking and the, the warmer, I'm going to interject a little feng shui in here. The, um, the color yellow in feng shui is associated with communication. So when you want people to kind of get together and talk, yellow is the color that you want. Uh, you want to show yellow in that space and it will create a, an environment where people can feel better talking to each other. And I think maybe that has something to do with what's happening now and this and this desire even for the interior design community to move in the direction of 2700. Also the light bulbs that are coming out now, um, the LED light bulbs that are required in California, we have warm whites and cool whites and our warm whites are anywhere from 2200 to 2700. Neutrals are 3000 ish. And then our cooler are in the four to 5,000 range. And then whenever I go to look at light bulbs, there's always tons of 4,000 sitting on the shelf and they're not as many as the 27 or 3,000 um, sitting on the shelf. So it's kind of, it's interesting um, how that's changing. And I know you guys in, on your side of the country, you don't have the same uh, uh, compliance that we have in California, so you're still able to use regular light bulbs, which, which are, you know, 27. Right. Yeah. Um, 27 in the home, or you can do 3000. Right. But we can still, I think majority of us are using LEDs, but you can still go and buy an incandescent. It's not completely out loud to hear yet. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they made the LEDs really great in those color temperatures, all color temperatures, actually. Um, and, and the warmer, so warmer temperature on that note is more appropriate for a little more traditional home, um, homes that have a warmer white paint palette to them, if you're using white, um, and homes that have a warmer, just a warmer color scheme in general, 2700 is better, it will enhance that, um, whereas a cool color temperature with a with a warm white paint just doesn't look right. And in the same, in the reverse, um, a really, really crisp white paint, putting 2700 Kelvin can, uh, recess lighting, whatever you wanna put in there, uh, it doesn't look right. It just doesn't, 
it doesn't read right. Something about it is wrong and um, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't connect. You don't connect with any of the colors. Um, also artwork, uh, one of the things that we struggle with with artwork, um, so with artwork, especially contemporary artwork, you need a much cooler color temperature and you don't want it to, as it dims, you don't want it to get warmer in color temperature. That's one of the technologies we're gonna talk about later. It's called warm dim. We have a few, but um, with contemporary art, you definitely want the color temperature to be uh, cooler, crisper, because there's, you need to see those primary colors. There's more contrast. So you really want to be careful about warm color temperatures, lighting artwork, unless you have really traditional like Renaissance artwork, that's cool. But you want to be careful about what color bulbs you get or what color temperature you fix when you're lighting artwork, because it can really, uh, it can damage anything that you've tried to do with your artwork, not damage, but it can, it, it definitely doesn't enhance your artwork. It does not great things to it if you have the wrong color temperature with the uh, the artwork that you're using. So um, that's one of the areas where we're going to talk about that more. But uh, 2700 can can make make it dingy. Right. So. I mean, mastering lighting artwork is a, a fun topic. That'll be a fun one to go to. Yes, definitely, definitely. We've had some. Um, some snap boos with people using uh, warm dim or 2700 in a really contemporary house that's white. Um, and the artwork just looked really not good. And the customer spent I, I, tens of thousands of dollars on artwork and they don't <laughs> like the lighting. It's, it's not a good thing. So, um, so kind of to recap, uh, the cooler climates want to warm up. And so they might want to use color temperatures that are 3000 Kelvin less and warmer color temperatures like yours, um, in the, especially in the, in the warm season, Florida, North the Carolinas, you might use the 3000 or above to kind of trick your mind into thinking that it's cooler. I think that rule of thumb, most people are still putting in 3000 K for recess lighting. Um, and then, you know, as our next episode or an upcoming episode having more control over whether it's three or 27 but you know the trend is as far as decorative lighting definitely being in 2700k yeah i i think so too anytime you're using a traditional lamp or a lamp like a we say lamp i'm sorry i'm going to say portable light so that's a a, a a tabletop lamp or floor lamp um when they're more when your vibe of your house is more traditional, I always see 2700 or warm <clears throat> uh, color temperature light bulbs in those lights. If you're doing something super modern in your house, especially in, in portables, um, it, it's integrated LED. A lot of the times the uh, LED strip light or the whatever light you're using is integrated into the, the um, portable and those tend to be cooler. Uh, cooler color temperatures. So it's kind of what you surround yourself with. And before we started uh, this particular episode, we were talking about what light we look good under and the lighting in our office and you, my office and your office is are, are different. Um, so you have in your office and the ceiling, you have fluorescence still. And in California, we can't have those and we're getting rid of those because of the mercury. And so we've gotten mostly away from uh, fluorescence, but those are always a cooler color temperature. It keeps you alert and awake, but it affects the way we look under the light, um, which always, I always wonder why when you go to a, a department store and you're, you're trying on a bathing suit, uh, you look green, you know, cause you have this 4,000 color temperature. Yes, it's crisp. Yes, you can see the lines. Maybe you don't want to. Um, so why, I wonder, I always wonder why don't they do 2,700 or 2,200, which is like the color of sunset in Golden Gate Park where they take pictures of all the models and everyone looks great and you look tan and the lines are gone. Everything's fantastic. So it, it, it's, it, so you have a fluorescent and we were just playing around with the light before because you have a couple of different light sources, right? I, yes. You know, a few things going on there. I, I do. I do. Because when I'm, this is an older office that um, I have. So basically we still have, I haven't put retrofits in 
and this is um, not in my home, but anyways, uh, so we still had this, but I was very washed out. So I was like, I have to change this up a little bit, but um, I, you know, going back to the home and then going back to the department store that you were talking about, you know, there's a trick that people do with restaurants, just so you know, when we go in and we find dine, we feel very warm. We call that campfire effect because we will sit, mm -hmm. we will have a longer conversation, probably not buy a more expensive wine. But yet, if it's a restaurant that we kind of are going to be burning and churning, like they just want to come in, eat and leave, you'll mm -hmm. notice as you walk in, the light levels are totally different in those types of restaurants, but it's psychologically for a reason. That makes sense. Yes, totally we will sense. sit and just talk. Yep. Right, right. Maybe it's like the airport where you feel like you never can really settle down there. It's like super bright. I, I do I do remember that from living in Japan. Um, a lot of the restaurants that are bright and lively and festive, you kind of go, you sit, you do your thing, maybe you talk a little while, but it is cycling in and out. And the restaurants that we would go to were the you know, the sushi, one piece of sushi was $200. Yeah. We never had that, by the way, but the lights were almost off in those restaurants. It was so, right. the light was so low, you really couldn't see, you know, it was almost like they didn't almost use lighting in, in, those, in those situations because I think they wanted people to spend their money, sit around, get comfy, yeah. yeah. You speak a little softer, a little slower, right. and you're enjoying right. that a little right. bit better. So that totally makes sense. But, and then also in a house, even if you're doing 27, I think that, probably really importantly, like you were talking about the department stores, 3000 K has to be in the closets because, you know, if you notice, you can go into some department stores and especially in men, you'll see them kind of walk to the window to see the Navy blue and the black. Cause we can see that differentiation, right? The Navy blue and true sunlight. So, you know, I think a crisper color in a closet for the main lighting, you may have some decorative lighting. That's not is pretty imperative in that area too. Right. And I also think uh, putting on, like applying makeup and um, anything that you do with your eyes, like contact lenses and things like that, you need a cooler temperature light because as you go down in color temperature, you also lose some lumens, some lumen output, some light output. It's not significant, but it's enough so that it, if you have eyes that are not perfect, you are going to seek out more light. And, and I definitely find that in our house, we uh, ironically uh, are in the lighting business. And at the moment have almost no lights in our house. I find myself going under our construction bulbs to read things and look at things because those construction bulbs are in the like high three, 3,000, 35 to 3,800. I don't want to eat dinner under that. And I don't want to watch TV under that light. Right. But when I need to read instructions and in a small box, that's really, that becomes really important. So yeah, I do think even though we have this sort of battle going on between these two color temperatures that are pretty close together, um, there are areas of the home where it just doesn't, it just doesn't cut it. That, that right. color temperature just won't cut it. And designers... And homeowners, I think, need to understand that. Like, if you buy your lighting or your electrician supplies your lighting, you don't know what it is um, and you don't ask about it, sometimes you'll get a color temperature put into your all your recess lighting in your house that is too cool and it doesn't feel like you want to be there. Um, if you, you know, it's important to be, I think as a homeowner and with your designer or your architect or whoever you're working with on your home to be included in the conversation of like, you need to go somewhere and say, hey, what, how does this feel? How do you feel in this light? Would you like this light to be your kitchen light or this light to be your kitchen light? So you're involved in the process. So you don't have somebody come in later because you don't like your house because you feel like the lighting's wrong. You don't know why. And it's because you have a color temperature that is not suitable for you and you don't like it and you don't, you don't feel comfortable in it. So there's that lighting psychology too. Yep. Those will be fun. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I think in our house, we have a 120 year old or 115 year old house. 
Um, we, and we have a lot of wood. We have a lot of like warm wood accents. And so our, our paint color is a warmer white paint color. And I find that we, um, we have what we call warm dim in our house. So it starts at about 3000 Kelvin and it goes down to 1800 Kelvin. Um, I find that in most of the house, I do use the dimmer so that it dims down warmer, except in the kitchen and the bathroom and our closet, which our closet has a couple of different layers of lighting. Uh, we have a regular light and then we have two recess lights in our, in our walk-in closet. And I do need to, to put those up all the way so I could see my navy top, my black top, same thing that you're talking mm -hmm. about. And, and the natural light too. And where we are in California, we get a lot of clear days, a lot of bright sunlight. I think you guys do too, where you are. Some areas don't, I don't right. know, you know, you guys have a winter, we don't have as much of a winter. So there's also the natural light that comes in that it can enhance or inhibit what the lighting inside your house is doing. So it's a lot to consider. And so I think you don't want to leave it to chance, like to some, somebody who is used to using a certain type of light in every home, when they do the install, they just assume that you're going to like this color temperature. And if you don't, you have to really change like the basic structure of the lighting in your home because the recessed is these days is kind of all over the place uh, all over the home and so mm -hmm. you know I think it's better to make that decision before and figure out what lighting you feel comfortable in my my, my in-laws they're in their 80s and they love 2700 kelvin even in their kitchen they insisted on it wow. so it's darker in there um I don't know what they use to read recipes or if they do that during the day, but they insisted on 2,700. They don't want anything warmer than that. That's kind of, wow. you know, it's also personal. It's really a personal it decision. We yeah. do go through an aging eye process, you know, as we get older with sun and maybe I haven't investigated enough of this, but you may need more lights if you're gonna do 2,700K. I think Just so. You have enough adequate light in there to be able to see. Right, right, right. Because yeah, there's the spacing of lighting, how light overlaps between, you know, spaces, not having dark spaces between recess lighting. And this is all part of the planning process of, of, of redoing or remodeling or refitting a home with, uh, with recess lights anyway. But um, yeah, I think you're going to, you need more, you need, you find you need more. When you get your iPhone out and you turn on the uh, the flashlight, you know, you don't have enough light in your house. So no, you know, exactly. something, yeah, you have to kind of, you have to be aware of it. So, um, so I think the battle is going to continue between 2,700 and 3,000. I know in future episodes, we're going to get into other color temperatures and when you would want to use those and in different circumstances in residence and in commercial buildings. We're going to talk more about that later and the kind of the psychology around that. But uh, I, I, I think the, you know, the battle is going to go on and I, I guess it's up to every individual what they feel comfortable with. In the end, it's really up to you. There's not a right or a wrong, it's sort of what's suitable for your home and your, your the furniture, everything. It's really much more a, a personal decision, so. We're going to leave it up to you guys, but um, we know what our favorites are and where they are. Um, and we're going to include the, um, the scale at the end um, uh, below our video. And also in our podcast, we'll give you that scale and you can play around with it. And you should buy different light bulbs, try them in your home, in different areas of your home and see what you like. And then you can maybe identify what your favorite color temperature is. Perfect. All right, so that's it for this week. Um, anyway, everybody have a great uh, rest of the, the week and the month, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye. Bye.